Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over an explanation between the relationship or of the relationship between momentum and impulse. And in a previous video, I went over what momentum is. You can link to that video in the upper right-hand corner of this video. But right now, I'm just going to go over uh, what impulse is before we talk about how impulse and momentum are related. So this is kind of the definition of impulse. It's the product of the force and the time over which that force acts. When we say product, we mean we multiply. We multiply the force and the time over which that force is applied. It's pretty straightforward. It's just the force times the time. You could also say it describes the effect of a force acting over a period of time. Kind of the same thing. But then one of the important things to remember is that when you apply a force over time, you're going to change the velocity of an object. Or in order to change the velocity of an object that has mass, which of course all objects have mass, you have to apply a force over some period of time. Now it could be a long time and it could be a really short time. But usually the force or the force is always applied over some time. Now this is the symbol. The symbol for impulse is J. Some people write it I, but the official symbol is J. And to calculate the impulse, all you do is you take the force that is applied in Newtons and multiply it times the time over which that force is applied. Okay, so once again, the symbol for impulse is J and the unit Okay, maybe seem a little weird, but the unit is Newton times seconds or Newton seconds. We don't say Newtons per second, it's Newton seconds because it's a force that's measured in Newtons and a time that's measured in seconds. And for example, we could say that the impulse is 50 Newton seconds. We say the impulse, it has, you know, we apply an impulse of 150 Newton seconds. All right. So now let's talk a little bit about how impulse and momentum are related. Now, I just think this is the best way to kind of think about the relationship. They're really related to each other by these two equations, which is Newton's second law. The force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And this is the momentum equation, which is the momentum is equal to P for momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. And I like to think that they're related to each other through this equation, which is the equation for the acceleration is simply the acceleration is the change in the velocity over the change in time. And I can now take from this equation, Newton's second law, take the acceleration out here and substitute the change in the velocity over the change in the time in for that equation, which that then gives me that the force is equal to the mass times the change in the velocity divided by the time, and then we just simplify that equation a little bit or we rearrange it so we have that the force times the time is equal to the mass times the change in velocity, which we have on the left-hand side is impulse and on the right-hand side is momentum. And basically what this equation tells me is that if I have a force and I apply that force over some time, then I'm going to have an object and I'm going to change its velocity. Or, in order to change the velocity of an object that has mass, I have to apply a force over time, an unbalanced force over time. Okay, and that's what that says right there. Basically, just if you say that in words, the force times the time, the force times the time is equal to the mass of the object times the change in velocity. And we can actually do a lot of things with this equation. It's actually a very useful equation. And we'll, of course, we'll do some um, examples uh, I'm going to do a quick little kind of example demo thing here, and then we'll do some uh, examples in the following videos. Now, what I like to do in class, in my class, is I have an egg. I actually have two eggs. I have egg one, and I have egg two, and I drop both eggs from about the height, from about my height, which is about two meters, a little less than two meters, but I try to drop them about two meters, and I drop egg number one right into a plastic container that's just sitting on the floor with nothing in it, and the egg breaks when it hits the container. So egg one is broken. And then I have another container, the same kind of container, and in the bottom I put a layer of foam, a couple inches of foam, and I just drop the egg in there and the egg bounces a little bit and it doesn't break. So I have one case where the egg broke and one case where the egg didn't break. But both eggs really did the same thing. They dropped the same distance, they had the same change in momentum, okay, from their velocity to zero, and we talk about why did one egg break and why did one egg not break. And usually after a few minutes from my students, we can get something out about the energy or the time or the, the foam absorbs the energy and somebody will usually come up with the idea that the force is spread out or the time it takes is longer. So the force 
it's spread out over a longer period of time. And we can use this equation and momentum, because this is momentum and this is impulse, to kind of analyze why one egg breaks and one egg doesn't, which we're going to do right now. Both eggs have the same mass. An egg weighs, excuse me, has a mass of about 60 grams, which is 0 0.06 kilograms, because this is going to be, everything is in kilograms because it's the metric system, base unit for the metric system and mass. And then when I drop an egg from two meters high, when it reaches the ground, it's traveling approximately 6.25 meters per second. So both eggs have the same mass, they're traveling at the same speed, so they both have the same change in momentum when they stop, okay? And this is the change in momentum. So the change in momentum is equal for both eggs. But what is different about each egg, or what is different about how each egg stops, or what is different, what is different is the amount of time that it takes for each egg to stop. And I looked online, tried to figure out what the time would be, but I thought that this was approximately representative. Egg one takes, I thought, about a thousandth, maybe it's a hundredth, takes about a thousandth of a second to stop. When it hits the ground, you know, you think of the egg, well, it breaks, so, so I just chose a thousandth of a second. Now, the other egg takes a longer period of time to stop because it hits that foam, and we're not really talking about the bouncing time, we're really talking about the time it takes when it hits the foam and then it would stop. And uh, I chose a time, a change in the time of about one-tenth of a second. All right, now we can use this equation. We use the momentum equation to determine that the momentum is the same, but now we can use this equation and we're gonna determine the force. Okay, what is the force that each egg feels from the floor when it stops. So I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to rearrange it to solve for the force. All right, and you can see the top we have the momentum and here we have the change in time. Okay, this is our momentum um, impulse equation. And so I'm just going to plug the values in for egg number one. The mass of the egg is 0 0.06 kilograms. It has a change in the velocity from when it hits the ground to when it stops of 6.25 meters per second. That's the change in velocity. And the time is a thousandth of a second. And that gives us a force felt by the egg from the floor. Um, it's not including the, 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 ma the mass of the, or the weight of the egg, but it gives us a force of about 375 newtons. Okay. Now for the other egg, we can do the same thing, it's basically the same thing, except this one slows down in a tenth of a second. Now if you think about it a little bit of ahead of time, what the answer is going to be, the difference between a tenth and a thousandth is a factor of 100. Okay, A tenth is 100 times longer in time than a thousandth of a second. So that means the force is going to be 100 times less because we're dividing by a bigger number. So therefore, egg number two only feels a force of 3.75 newtons when it takes a tenth of a second to stop. Well, the same egg, when it hits the ground without the foam, it stops in a thousandth of a second, and it feels a force that is 100 times greater, and it breaks, and that force is 375 newtons. Okay, so now another way to think of it a little bit intuitively is that egg number one feels a very big force and that that force is applied over a very short period of time. Egg number two, sometimes we say the force is smaller because the force is applied over a much longer period of time. Okay, so egg one, big force, short period of time. Egg number two, small force applied over a much longer period of time. All right, so there you go. That's the relationship between impulse and momentum. We went over the definition of impulse. We talked about how we drive the kind of the impulse momentum equation, which is this equation, which we have right up here. The force times the time is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. In order to change an object's velocity, we have to apply a force over time. If we apply a force over time, we're going to change an object's velocity. Okay, and then I try to do a simple little kind of a demonstration problem here or an example problem in the next video. 
we'll do some more uh, calculations. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Show all your friends how much you care and share this video with them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.